be doing a question from Leap Code called Task Scheduler. It's rated as a medium. Let's get started. Given a char array representing tasks CPU need to do, it contains capital letters A to Z, where different letters represent different tasks. Tasks could be done without original order. Each task could be done in one interval. For each interval, CPU could finish one task or just be idle. However, there is a non-negative cooling interval n that means between two same tasks, there must be at least n intervals that CPU are doing different tasks or just be idle. You need to return the least number of intervals the CPU will take to finish all the given tasks. Okay, let's get an example. Tasks, we have three A's, three B's, idle time n equals two, output A. Why we have a pattern of a b idle a b idle a b in between any two a's we have two non a's between them any two b's we have two non b's between them all right so this actually isn't too bad let's think about this intuitively what is our upper and lower bound right so what's our best case in this scenario um, let's say we have this example, A, B, C, A, B, C, N equals 2. Here our output will be 6. Why? Because we have A, B, C, A, B, C. That's literally what one potential sequence could look like. And this is going to happen when we have no idle times. So our output will actually be equal to the length of the tasks. There's no idle time, so it's just whatever's being input. Now, what if we had a, 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 the idle time of n equals 2? What happens then? This is our worst possible scenario because now we have a, idle, idle, a, idle, idle, a. We have an output equaling 7. Now, what if I had a, 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 but a single b, n equal 2. What happens then, right? We have a. Now we can just sub in this b for the idle that was there and keep everything else the same. And our output, if you notice, will still be 7. So do you see a pattern here? How far can we go without increasing our output? We can go up until we need no, we can, we can go up until we fill all the idols. So if we have something like a, 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 b, b, c, c, n equals 2, we'll have a, b, c, a, b, c, and another a. And our output would equal still 7. Now, what is this dependent on, right? It depends on the most occurring task because all the others they can just fill in all the idle spots that are there so how do we go about calculating this well let's see how many idles we would need for a given sequence so let's see in this example right we have one two three four idles we don't need one after the end because we have our last a there we just need it right before our last a so we have our max occurring number, um, which is three in this case, we have three A's, um, minus one times N. And this equals all the idols. We don't want to include this last A, but everything before then. So two times two is equal to four. Now, if you wanted to see how many intervals this would actually take. We can do that as well. We can just equals, equals max occurring number minus one. But this time we want to multiply by n plus one because we want to include these a's right here. And then we want to add in this last little bit that was left. So we can just call this counter and I'll tell you why I'm doing counter. Um, but this will give us the intervals in this case, the total number. Now, how do we found counter? Counter is going to be the number of max occurring 
number. So what if we had, right, as we look in this original example, we have three A's and three B's, both of them are maximum. They all fit the idle time, but we want to append A and B at the end. So we have a counter of two because we have two of the max numbers possible because they all just go at the end after. And of course, what if, you know, we had an example of A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then actually our answer would be adding these to the end. So that would now be nine. So we want to find, it, so this will not always hold, right? We want to find the max out of the length of tasks given and these intervals that we've calculated. So let's just go and code this up now. Okay, I want to keep track. So as I read in these tasks, I want to keep track of how many of each I see. So I'm going to maintain a dictionary for I tasks. I in D, D of I plus equals one, else D of I equals one. Um, Um, okay. Um, and now that I have all of these tasks, I want to get the maximum occurring one. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort all of these. So LST equals sorted T. And I want to sort these by their values. So this, and I'm just going to go ahead and reverse this tree. This way I know the maximum number values are at the front. Now I have my max number at this first position. So in this example, it would be three and it could have been A or B, doesn't matter. But now we want to actually go ahead and see how many of these max numbers we have. So initialize I to zero, while I less than the length of LST and LST of I equals max number. I want to keep a counter here. Counter plus equals one. I plus equals one. And now we want to return max number, number minus one times our given idle time n plus one plus the counter. And we want to return the max of either this or the length of tasks. Now let's run this. There is an error here. Did not, oh, now we use my code. This works, now let's submit. And it works. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, see you later.